like a hell cut. Good day, your province. This is just an update from me, from the people of my province. Those of you who are guests, those of you who follow this page from other parts of Papua New Guinea, I want to welcome you and thank you. I do these uh, videos as an effort to try to update my people, people in my province, what's going on and what their governor is doing. And also accept their criticisms and their comments and see what I can do to react to them if they're relevant and if they're valid. Okay, oftentimes the comments are valid. There's instances where in, in you know, there's, there's always that one or two people that, you know, no matter what you do, they will always hate you. Uh, and, you know, you could run across water and save them and they'd still hate you. I have those type of critics out there. That's okay. They spread lies and try to, you know, try to basically uh, in any way, shape or form attack what I'm doing. But that's fine, they're, 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 that's their right. They're, I will fight for their democratic right to express themselves and criticize me, that's fine. So these uh, commentaries or this post that I do are for the benefit of the people of Oro. And, and sometimes I'll speak on issues that concern Papua New Guinea. And if you interact, if you follow me, if you comment, I appreciate that. I want to thank each and every one of you who do uh, make an effort to follow my page, who do make an effort to share the, you know, the information that I post here and I appreciate appreciate your interaction today we passed the budget for the province it took some time I think we were the fourth last province to pass the budget it took some time because we were also a group of four provinces that put their hands up for the IFMS which is the integrated finance management system a new software that finance department has uh, rolled out in an effort to improve transparency and good governance and Oro was one of the first provinces to put its hand up this was in 2017 and I had hoped that it would be done by mid 2017 so that we could access our funds and roll out our projects unfortunately it took almost two and a half years to three years to complete and we're still having teething problems uh, and as a result our budgets have been late because each and every time we've had to bring teams from Oro over to interact with Treasury and Finance and try and, you know, get them to download the information and we, we, we basically amend uh, the budget where it needs to be amended because of technical errors, etc., etc. And it's taken some time, but finally we were able to complete all this and we delivered the budget. The Treasurer met us today. He had a great... Uh, about an hour with us he spoke to myself uh, Oro turned up as a team we tried to do this in the last two budget we also turned up as a team where the open members and myself turn up and present our provincial budget I want to thank the two open members the uh, honorable member for Ejivitari Richard Maisera and the honorable member for Sohe uh, Mr. Henry Amuli both of them have been working very well with me in this last uh, few years since election we communicate and we try to share responsibilities and we try to deliver to our province and our people as best as we can with the very limited resource envelope that we have uh, to utilize. Okay, so our province budget has been passed and I just want to say that now that it has been passed we will be rolling out a money plan and we will be managing every Kina and Toya in the province as stringently as possible now that we have IFMS. Okay, with IFMS you have greater oversight over the movement of all funds in the province. We didn't have that in the past and there was a lot of funny business going on between you know the administration, the treasury office, the bank and various individuals and there were good people who were trying their best to stop this but unfortunately we couldn't. Uh, corruption was rife at various levels and in various instances, various institutions, various offices and as a result a lot of money is intended for the people never made it to the people. That is why we uh, put our hands up to be one of the first provinces to have this system. This system allows us to have access to information in a timely manner. We get reports in a timely manner. We're able to see the movement of funds as they happen and intervene if we need to, to stop funds being paid out to people that ought not to be paid or to be paid for projects that are not genuine or to be, you know, stolen or, you know, etc., etc. So, that's the IFMS 
it's not perfect we are still having teething problems uh, there are delays to the running of checks for instance checks for 2017 still have not been paid out because of a mess in the Treasury office and we have to understand that the Treasury office in the province we don't control that that remains with finance we are taking measures to try and transfer the Treasury functions to the provinces so the provinces can actually control the Treasury office and devolve them to the districts so the districts can also control their Treasury office currently everything is controlled in Waigani and this causes a huge huge nightmare for us and our people. It causes a lot of delays in regards to how we are able to access our funds and deliver them. Uh, IFMS stands for Integrated Finance Management Systems. It's a software for managing public funds in the country, in the province, in the district. And it's supposed to improve good governance and improve reporting. And it does that, but there are issues. For instance, you need to have 24-7 constant power supply, you need to have 24-7 constant uh, internet connectivity and all the people that are relevant for processing your checks have to be there at the same time. So these are issues that need to be rectified and we will rectify them as we go along. Some time ago in one of my posts someone commented and, and, and basically raised the issue of logging. Well in regards to logging, as you know there are three major projects that we are currently reviewing. We uh, claiming that these projects are illegally operating. One is the Ifane project, one is the Collingwood project, one is the Musa project. All these projects are logging projects, they're not agricultural projects, but permits were granted to certain individuals and foreign-owned companies to come and log large tracts of forest on the pretext of agriculture. In fact, they are not agricultural projects. We have stopped the Collingwood project and the Musa project and they are subject to investigations. In fact, the Collingwood project is an interesting project because he was an individual and entities who entered illegally into an area that a current court order exists, preventing people from accessing that land and doing anything with it. And they have moved their machines there in an attempt to clear fell large tracts of forest. Well, we've arrested 11 foreigners over there and they're currently facing prosecution once the cases are complete and we are conducting an investigation in regards to how these companies obtain the permits that they obtain because none of them were endorsed by the provincial government. In regards to the Musa project, again, uh, it appears that documents were forged by certain individuals and presented at the Provincial Forest Management Committee, which is a committee that is actually attached to the forest department. It's got nothing to do with our province. It, it, it sounds as if it belongs to the province, but the fact of the matter is it belongs to the department. And I've already informed the minister that we will be uh, suspending this uh, committee because this committee does not... Uh, seem to be processing documents or applications with consultation of my office and the landowners and it's causing a lot of problems. So that case is also continuing. We've got lawyers that are looking at this and will be conducting judicial reviews. In regards to the Ifana case, well we're investigating how an ILG certificate application was used to obtain an FCA permit. This is wrong, this is illegal, it should never have happened. It happened during the election period when everyone was away for elections. And the meeting that was convened by a deputy administrator is in my opinion illegal because he does not have the authority to convene such a meeting but yet he went ahead and did it. Anyway, this is just a very short summary of some of the activities that uh, are happening in our province and I'm just keeping you updated updated on this. We still have a composite police team from Port Mosby on the ground and that is the reason why we have no law and order issues in our province at this moment. I mean it's manageable. It's not as bad as it was just a few months ago. We had the most peaceful Christmas, the most peaceful New Year that Aura has ever had in the history of, I don't know, Aura since the last 20 years. And that is all thanks to an intelligence-driven effort to have a police team that's mobile on the ground to support our local police team in managing the law and order issues in the province. Diguna Hydro will be coming online on by end of March and it will provide three megawatts of power for the whole province. Uh, the proceeds of that project some of it will be coming to the national government and a portion of it will be given to the provincial government to increase our internal revenue so that we can take stock of uh, the issues in our province in regards to roads and bridges and you know infrastructure needs and attending to them when and where we can. Other than that, other than that I want to <clears throat> thank each and every one of you. Uh, coronavirus is a major issue, COVID-19, 
it is now declared by the World Health Organization as a pandemic, which means it is in most parts of the world. So coming to uh, Papua New Guinea will be a reality that we must be ready for. And when coronavirus hits Papua New Guinea, what do we do? Most important thing you need to do is work on your, work on your personal hygiene. You have to look after yourself. At the same time, you have to manage what you eat because it is important to have a robust uh, uh, immune system. The coronavirus is going to attack uh, the, all of us, but those who do not have a robust immune system are most vulnerable. And other most vulnerable members of the community are our children and our, our elders, okay, as well as people who have autoimmune diseases, okay. You have to really work hard at managing your diet, okay? At the same time, look at your lifestyle. A lot of people who are chewing bitter nuts, smoking and drinking alcohol, I urge you to stop because this could kill you. Not just from the fact that you do this, but from the fact that these activities diminish your immune system and make you vulnerable to coronavirus and other diseases. You know, obviously there's flu and all types of other uh, in infectious diseases that are around, but coronavirus is very deadly and very dangerous, apparently. I mean, the U.S. just banned travel from Europe into the U.S., so people from Europe cannot go to the U.S. anymore. Japan closed down all its schools, and a lot of similar things are happening around the world where countries are taking stock of the coronavirus and its effects and what it is doing, and are very alarmed and are taking serious measures. The PNG government is going to be rolling out a national coronavirus or COVID-19 program shortly and they will be able to inform people in regards to, uh, well, people what they need to do so that they are safe, they're able to protect themselves and their families. Other than that, I want to thank each and every one of you who make the effort to uh, support my efforts and uh, who, who watch and communicate and those who criticize. And I, don't, I appreciate those of you who criticize. I only ask that if you do criticize, then please, can you ensure that you criticize using facts? At the same time, can you also provide solutions or alternatives or give information? If you're going to criticize, give information that can help us uh, you know, act on your criticisms. If you're just going to criticize for the sake of criticism because you hate me or whatever, then that's irrelevant and I'm going to just block you because uh, you know, we don't need people like you who are going to waste our time, to be frank. Uh, those of you who uh, communicate and post useful information on, the, on, on, on my page, I appreciate that and I want to thank you and encourage you to continue to doing so. I, I especially uh, like information that's in regards to promoting good health and a healthy lifestyle and positive thinking. Anyhow, thank you very much. You guys have a great day and God bless all of you. And stay safe, uh, eat natural, healthy garden foods, avoid processed foods, avoid processed sugar and refined sugar, avoid sugary drinks, stick to drinking water, eat your garden food, eat lots of greens and kumu, you know, just make a serious effort at, at maintaining a healthy immune system. Thank you very much.